You're watching Cape Media News, brought to you by Cape Media Center. Tonight on Cape Media News, special election set for Yarmouth. Plus, Chatham preps for a special town meeting. And a DY athlete sets a new school record. These stories and more are coming up next on Cape Media News. Good evening and welcome to Cape Media News, your source for hyperlocal news that matters. I'm Lauren Williamson. And I'm Jamie Horton. On Tuesday, Yarmouth's Select Board met for the first full meeting since the passing of Chair Michael Stone. On the agenda was scheduling a special election to fill the vacancy left on the Select Board. One resident suggested having the election coincide with the November general election to save the town money. But the town clerk, Mary Maslowski, explained why that wouldn't be the best option. I know there has been a lot of discussion about November 5th being a wonderful day to, to try and do a dual election. Even if the timing worked out, it is really not. It would cost the town significantly more money to hold a dual election. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it is actually two elections. It's two check-ins. Uh, we don't have the uh, sufficient amount of poll pads to do check-in for, for both elections at the same time. Uh, we would, and frankly, to have two ballots out there, to me, jeopardizes the the accuracy of the presidential election. Uh, it leaves too many opportunities for people to put the wrong ballot in the wrong envelope. Mm -hmm. And if somebody, by mistake, which will happen, put two ballots in the same envelope or mm -hmm. puts them in the incorrect ballot envelope, we will have no choice but to, to um, reject their, their ballot for their presidential election. So to me, the presidential election results are too important to jeopardize um, with having a second ballot out there. So that is the primary reason that I've uh, requested that you, mm -hmm. when you vote to set your election date, mm -hmm. that you also vote to waive vote by mail for the, uh, for the special election only. I understand that people- Even for Saturday? Even for a Saturday, because that second ballot would be, potentially would be out there when the general election ballot is still out there. Um, those general election ballots I see. would be November 5th, so we'd, we'd be mailing them right, about, right at about the same time, so it would still be a tough, a tough call. I make a motion that we call a special election to fill the vacancy of the December board 7th. for December 7th mm -hmm. and to waive the mail-in voting. Is that good? That's good. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. The operator of the vehicle that struck a boat trailer on August 30th, leaving a teen dead and others seriously injured, has been charged criminally. Following an investigation by Yarmouth police detectives, Peter Richmond, 81 of Yarmouthport, is charged with vehicular homicide by negligent operation. The teen who lost his life in the crash has been identified as 14-year-old John Hewen of Norwell. September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Earlier this week, Barnstable County Human Services decorated the inner courtyard at Cape Cod Community College with ribbons of remembrance for those who have died by suicide. This month, educate yourself and others about suicide prevention. Learn the warning signs and risk factors how to support someone who is suicidal, and familiarize yourself with the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. All of this information and more can be found on the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services website at samhsa.org. September is also National Recovery Month. On September 22nd, join groups like Recovery Without Walls, Well Strong, One Shared Spirit, and more for a free screening of the award-winning documentary, Recovery City. Doors will open at 3.30, and be sure to stick around afterward for a Q&A with the film's director, Lisa Oliveri. Or join the Barnstable County Sheriff's Office on September 25th to hear former NBA star Chris Heron's story about his addiction and recovery. 
Chris has been in recovery since 2008 and hopes to inspire education about the disease of addiction. This free event is appropriate for middle schoolers and up and will be held at the Barnstable Performing Arts Center. The Family Resource Centers of Cape Cod have new free wellness groups available this month. For teens aged 13 to 17, the Healing Justice Group is a safe space to come together, connect, and support each other. The group will focus on healing trauma, moving, breathing, and developing life skills to become healthier and more engaged in their community. The Family Movement Group for parents and their kids ages 4 through 12 will take place every week on Wednesdays. This group focuses on connection through movement like yoga. Pre-registration is required for both groups at CapeCodFamilyResourceCenter.org. Over the past few weeks, the Chatham Police Department has been implementing body-worn camera and cruiser-mounted camera systems. Every Chatham police officer has been assigned their own body cam, and every cruiser now has a forward-facing camera and an internal camera recording the back seat. Chatham Police Department stated that, quote, the department recognized the value of BWCs and CMSs for their ability to improve transparency and accountability, to improve the documentation and collection of evidence, to improve interactions between officer and the public, and for training purposes. Chatham Police Department joined the lengthy list of departments that are already using body and cruiser cams, including Yarmouth, Barnstable, Provincetown, and Wellfleet Police Departments. This week, the Barnstable County Board of Regional Commissioners reaffirmed their opposition to the construction of the multi-purpose machine gun range in the Upper Cape Water Supply Reserve. The commissioners reiterated their strong commitment to protecting Cape Cod's primary drinking water and called on Governor Healy to halt the project. Commissioner Forrest said that the EPA has determined that the project is an unacceptable risk to Cape Cod's drinking water supply, and the governor can and should act now. The precedent was established by former Governor Paul Cellucci, who stopped a similar project on May 19, 1998. He then proceeded to help pass bipartisan legislation creating the Upper Cape Water Supply Reserve. The commissioners join the Assembly of Delegates and the Association to Preserve Cape Cod as yet another group to call upon the Healy administration to put a stop to this project. The town of Barnstable is hosting a vendor event focusing on procurement and bidding for public projects on September 18th at Barnstable High School. The minority, women, and veteran construction contractors outreach event will feature representatives from the Division of Capital Asset Management, the Massachusetts Supplier Diversity Office, and the Town and County Procurement Office. For more information or to register, you can visit capecod.gov. Coming up after the break, Chatham's special town meeting. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cape Media News. On Monday, September 16th, the town of Chatham will hold a special town meeting to consider one article seeking $4 million for the continuation of improvements at 90 Bridge Street, including new piers and floats for use by recreational and commercial boaters, along with the return and repurposing of historic Stage Harbor Coast Guard Boathouse as a shellfish upweller. The town released a preview show explaining the article this week, and here is Greg Berman, director of the Department of Natural Resources, to tell us why now. First, the why now, or why not wait until the next annual town meeting in May? The Shellfish Advisory Committee, by unanimous vote, requested that the select board call a special town meeting to fund the completion of the 90 Bridge Street project. This sentiment was echoed by the South Coastal Harbor Plan Committee and the Waterways Advisory Committee. Waiting until the May annual town meeting would delay the project by about nine months. In addition to necessary amounting upwell of repair costs, this would extend the amount of time the shellfish are vulnerable to fuel and boat washing contamination. Also, the project engineer has estimated that this nine month delay would result in about a 3% cost escalation, or about $160,000. There will be a new building code as of July 1st. 
but the state has not provided exactly what will be in the code. We've already received several variances for this project, but the new building code may require design changes and perhaps additional variances, which would result in further delay and increased costs. Starting work before January 1st would allow us to stay under the existing code, but what's left in the 2017 bond can't cover the next phase. The Select Board and Finance Committee both recommend passage of the article. The Town of Barnstable's Parking Division would like to remind residents that parking compliances at specific beaches will remain in effect through Columbus Day. This applies to Millway Beach, Ropes Beach, and town ways to water that include Lake Waquocket, Forts Beach, Oregon Beach, Wianu Avenue, Seaview Ave, Riley's Beach, Long Beach, and the Katuit Town Dock. All other beaches will be open to all residents and visitors. The U.S. National Weather Service issued a warning last week about high surfs and rip currents. Hurricane season is well underway, and while temperatures are cooling, the water is still warm enough to swim. Weather can be unpredictable this time of year, so stay up to date about high surfs and rip currents as strong currents and undertows cause 46 deaths annually. Visit weather.gov forward slash Boston for local warnings. The Hyannis artist shanties have begun their fall hours. From now until September 30th, the shanties will be open Thursday through Monday from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For the month of October, they will be open Friday through Sunday from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. However, off artists often come in early and stay late beyond the set hours. And make sure to come back regularly as artists and vendors change weekly. The Harwich Fire Association is excited to announce that they are hosting the Bruins alumni in a fiery face-off against the local heroes of the Harwich Firefighters hockey team. Puck drop is at 1.30 on September 22nd at the Charles Moore Arena. Don't miss the Chuck-a-Puck contest, a 50-50 raffle, and photo and autograph opportunities. Proceeds will benefit the Harwich Fire Association and the Cape Cod Firefighters Cancer Relief Fund. The Harwich Council on Aging has a new set of monthly programs. Fridays in September, join the craft workshop in building a mini scarecrow to display in your guard, planter, or window box. Stick around for the October craft to make a festive fall fabric wreath. Or if you have more of a musical disposition, join Kathy Hatch for Introduction to Ukulele. If you're looking for a more supportive program, the HCOA offers a dementia caregiver support group with a concurrent companion group on Wednesdays from 2 to 3 p.m. To view all of this month's programs and to register, you can visit harwich-ma.gov forward slash 224. Also in Harwich next month, the Elder Services of Cape Cod and Barnstable County Cooperative Extension is offering a healthy eating workshop. Starting October 2nd, this free program is for older adults who want to learn more about nutrition, physical activity, and lifestyle changes for better heart and bone health. All six sessions will meet at the Harwich Community Center from 9 to 11.30 a.m. To celebrate 95 years of aviation, the Cape Cod Airfield will be open to the public tomorrow, the 14th, for their Wings and Wheels anniversary event. From 10 to 3, you can bring the whole family to enjoy aircraft, antique car shows, biplane rides, skydiving, remote control plane demonstrations, food trucks, and even more. Looking for more to do this weekend? Check out the annual Harwich Cranberry Arts and Music Festival. Saturday and Sunday, head to the Harwich Community Center for food trucks, over 150 crafters, nonprofit community tables, kids' activities, and Cran Jam live music. Festival organizers would like to note that there will be no beach event or fireworks this year, but still plenty of fun for the whole family to enjoy. And now, here's Ryan Downs with a look at this week in high school sports action. Welcome back to the Cape Media News Sports segment. I'm your host and local sports guy, Ryan Downs. It's week two in the fall sports season, and we went to another couple of games this week. 
So let's get right into the weekly recap. In DY's first volleyball match in almost a week, they hosted the St. John Paul Lions. Even though these two schools are less than 10 miles apart, they have not played each other since the 2016 season. Going all the way back to 2013, their first matchup recorded on Max Preps, the Dolphins have won all seven matchups while dropping a total of one set back in 2014. Despite all that, last year, the Lions finished with a record of 15 and seven before their season ended in the Division V quarterfinal to Mount Greylock, the eventual state champs. Led by senior Ava Cech and a pair of standout sophomores, Zlata Alioshka and Caitlin McGrail. This year, the Lions are looking to claim their first victory in the series. But that won't come so easy when you have to face a team with similar experience. The Dolphins, led by Mariah Eaton and Vivian Castano, were ready to defend their home court. Castano entered the game only 27 assists away from the school record. As the game got underway, DUI played like they had something to prove and took the lead early on and never looked back. They finished the first set with a score of 25 to 12. As things were looking bleak for the Lions, they rallied in the second set to take a big lead at nine to five, forcing DY to call a timeout and make an adjustment. And well, the adjustment worked because DY exploded, allowing St. John Paul to score just one more point the entire set, claiming the second set 25 to 10 largely in part to senior libero Ireland Shank's contributions. Shank finished the set with nine consecutive serves to make it 15 to nine before being subbed. And she finished the game with nine serving aces off of 20 serves, resulting in 17 points scored. She also had a kill, two assists, two digs, and 13 serve receptions. Feeling like they had accomplished what they needed in the first two sets, DY decided to get some of their younger talent involved and take their starters out pretty early into the third set. And they didn't miss a beat. They smothered the Lions with the same dominance as their starters, claiming the third set 25 to 15. DY now holds an 8-0 record with a 24-1 set record in the series. Also, we'd like to shout out Vivian Castano for breaking the school record in assists. Castano finished the match with 22 total assists, placing her just five assists behind the school record. And sure enough, two days later on Wednesday, when the Dolphins traveled to Dartmouth High School, she set the new record. EY took a timeout to honor and celebrate her accomplishment. And get ready for some more powerful kicks. We were also able to catch another Bonomoy boys soccer game this past week in which Monomoy cruised to a commanding six to nothing victory over Cape Cod Academy in a matchup on Wednesday night as well. With senior striker, Seamus St. Pierre recording two goals. St. Pierre opened the scoring early, netting the first goal just four minutes into the game. Not long after, Monomoy doubled its lead when senior Tomer Khalil found the back of the net at the 29 minute mark, giving them a comfortable two to nothing advantage heading into the half. The second half continued to showcase Monomoy's dominance. Just two minutes into the half, eighth grader Nick Haddon extended the lead to three to nothing with the well-placed shot in his first career varsity goal. St. Pierre struck again with his second goal of the match at the 55 minute mark, sealing Monomoy's control over the game. And Monomoy's relentless offense kept Cape Cod Academy backed up on their half of the field the entire match leading to a six to nothing victory. With this victory, Monomoy continues its strong start to a season with a three and record, and they look to push it to four and tonight when they take on Nosset at 6 p.m. under the lights on their own field. And that's it for this week's sports update. Back to you, Lauren and Jamie. Thanks, Ryan. Have you ever wondered what us news anchors are talking about during the credits? I know I have. We'll be taking a break next week, so, as a special treat, here are a few clips of us chatting after the show. I'm Jamie Horton. And I'm Mitch Sock. 
And so, yeah, we talk, and I don't... I wish I could grow a beard. Yeah, but it's, 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 just... a, it's a thing, you know? I mean, you do have a pretty thick mustache. It's prominent, um, right, but like nothing I don't know if cheeks. this. Yeah, I don't know if this really looks like we're talking about facial hair with our hands, because I'm not looking at the camera. I mean, But it's, it probably does. Um, for people that can read lips, I mean, this yeah. is going to be hysterical. Hysterical. Yeah, hysterical. They're, they're going to have a hard time with that one. <laughs> going to the library instead of the beach tomorrow? I mean, I wish I could. I have to work, but you know. That was a good job. Oh, good job, that was great. That was how they massacred the, uh, I'm, I'm Horton. Hort I'm Jamie Horton. <laughs> that was good, guys. Da, 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 da. Oh, wow. What a time, what a time to be alive. Oh my goodness. This is season. It's just, just there's there's so much. Just so much. I mean, we're peppering spooky soup and putting all kinds of stuff in spooky soup. What, what, would, you, you, what would you put in your witch's brew? Oh my goodness. Um, well, obviously, um, baby fingers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, from real babies. From actual babies. I'm that evil. And then we're talking, and we're talking, so and I'm gonna look over there, crazy. and I'm and not I'm gonna pretend like I, I so did this, and, and I really wanted to do it, but and then the urge is there. Yeah, it's you there. It's really it. there. And then, yeah. All right. Good show. Yeah. That was a good show. Can you believe, like, all this news just happening? It's just, we're it's covered just, in news. We we're, are, it's literally just splattered, splattered yeah. with news. It's going to be hard to get out. Moist with news. It's yeah, be hard, moist with it's news. It's going to be hard to dry out all the news. I think it's going to leave a stain. We're going to need a lot of towels. And we talk, and we talk, and I'm going to try not to look as angry this week as I did in previous weeks because it looked like I, I was know. yelling at somebody, so. But, oh, yeah, I think I think we did that good really over good there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And... All right. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you have a story that you would like to see covered, send us an email at newstip at capemedia.org. Tune in every week for more hyperlocal news that matters on Channel 26, Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media, including Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. For Cape Media News, I'm Lauren Williamson. And I'm Jamie Horton. Another conversation. Another conversation. You think this will make the B one? I yeah. hope. Yeah, I'm thinking for 2025, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I really liked Maxie though. She's better at this. Uh... She set the bar too high. Yeah, she did.